If I go to the same charts, but I look at a weekly chart, I do a big view of the bonds, it's that inverse head and shoulder that I've been talking for weeks. Meaning what? Meaning that I'm going to take it and show you. Look, we have this down structure like this. But look, this is a shoulder area. This is a head area for the bond. And we might have, like I told you, three months, 90 days, up, down, up, down on that shoulder, which is the 108 area, roughly 108, right? To the 113. So let me write it down. So that you know, because it's going to help you tremendously time your longs and your shorts in the market. 108 support, 113. So it goes at 108, I'm buying the market. It goes to 113, I'm selling the market. So as, as the market goes and play this ping pong on the 10 year treasury, which is going to lead everything, right? Shoulder, three months, head, shoulder, three months, right? So three months, February, March, April, or May. And we are playing this shoulder. And then if we crack back up, guess what? Then when they start lowering rate, then the bonds are going to fly, which means the market is going to fly as well. Because when bonds up, rates goes down. When rates goes down, that's good for the economy and people have confidence with lower rates. Right? But we have this range that you need to be careful, 113, 108. Next chart that is going to help you navigate the market, obviously, is going to be the VIX, the fear factor index. So you can see, right, that there's a lot of support going on around here, this 13 area, right? And there's a lot of resistance support going on at that 15.5. I think we're on this range here. Yeah. 15.75, 13. And believe it or not, we may stay in this range for a while. It might go for a couple of weeks. Yeah, we might peak at one point to 18. But I think this is going to be to the institutional non zone area, like in between here. It's 1297, 1575. And I think you are going to see this VIX range play again and again and again and again. And it's going to be super, super powerful, everybody. By the way, your likes and comments are appreciated so that other people, guys, can see the feed. Yeah. Your likes, comments, if you think that those are helpful, because we do the cuts, put them on DTZ on day trading zones channel, but you wait a week, you wait whatever. This you get right now, all right? Next, we are going to look for the stock market review and the market review before we go to stock and crypto specific. We are going to look at the DXY, the Dixie, the dollar index, okay? So on the Dixie, you can see that we start down trending, see? Your well high channel, the structure, buy on blue, sell on purple. And look, beautiful purple top, and has been selling and selling. As a matter of fact, if I go back on the replay and you look where we were in statistics and probability, you can see the probability calculator at an 85% chance of rejection of the top on the Dixie on the doubt. And then the rest is history. You speed up at 10 and you sell the Dixie here, boom, and you play it and it's sell on purple with high probability. Here you had the 85%, 85.2% on the Dow index and boom, look what the tool did. And it's game over. And then the power trend box turns down as well. It turns pink down, see, short term trend, and long-term trend turning down here. So the dollar, oh, the Dixie here is going down. Well, if the Dixie is going down, the Dixie is going to support 
risk on because when the dollar goes on, remember, the dollar goes down, it's risk on, meaning, meaning people are buying risk asset, crypto stock. When the dollar goes up, they are buying defense, right? So the Dixie here is, is, is in a down trajectory, right? So now, now what do we have? We have everything confirming in the stock market, couple of things. The shallow pullback at 108 on the bond, shallow pullback up on the Dixie, right? This 108, 105, right? Which means that all the market drop are going to be bought. It's going to be like an elastic. Up, 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 snap back to the mean, back up again. And that's what you see every day. You see that on NVIDIA. You see that on a lot of stuff, right? So you, you got to be careful because it looks to me that the market, and, and let's look at the SPX because instead of it looks to me, well, let's chart speak to it. So here's the down, look at the down channel, the up channel. The structure keeps on going up and up and up and pushing to the institutions. We are going to the long-term calculator towards this 5385, 5500. So it looks to me that this 5500, 5375 is going to be a huge resistance in the market. But now it boils the question as well, it's going to be the big support. And the supports are getting higher and higher and higher. I have now a 4,800. It used to be a 4,500 and a 4,750. Now we are 4,850 here. And we are going to be at 4,150. So the gold post, if we go, so it goes up, it goes up, it goes up. And then we structure the gold post on the retracement, which is very profound. And, and by the way, if it like... If it's helpful, your likes, comment are helpful. Smash that like button, please. It helps us with the algo. So this lower high, lower low from this 5,300, 5,500 is going to be limited now to 4,800 to 41, uh, what's the institutional zone? 4,150. So see, the, 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 the retracement becomes more and more and more and more shallow. Also, I could argue this too. It could keep on going up, going up, going up, going up towards the 4,500, right? And at one point, we're going to get a, a violent couple of days retracement to that trend line only, which is back where I told you, towards that uh, 5,400. So see that fi that 5,050 has been very, very sticky. Now, if they do break that 5,050 area, then we go to the 4,800. Then we underpin 4,800 area. So 5,050, 4,800, 5,150, 5,375, 5,500. And you can take that to the bank because these numbers are going to be very, very, very strong for the rest of the year. You know, for the rest of the year, those numbers are going to be extremely strong, people, right? And um, so if this is helpful, your likes and comments are appreciated. We are going to go to stock specific. This was the, the stock market review, right? And we are going to go to uh, stock market specific and showing you the, on the Magnificent 7 how we have some crap. Now, before we finish the um, market review, part of the market review I wanted to show you is this. Number one, we have Trump completely set. So we have him set for now to go against Biden. So we don't have drama anymore. This is, this is set in the nomination. Now, in the economical calendar Friday, you have the CPI and the consumer confidence on uh, CPI on Thursday, consumer confidence, right? On Friday, 10 a.m. 
But the most important is going to be next week, the housing situation and the FOMC. We have a lot of stuff next week. You have the FOMC decisions, right? Which they should not touch the rates. And you have the housing next week. So I think the market, what the market is going to do is going to ignore the bad number of PPI and CPI like they did yesterday. But the bond is not ignoring those numbers. See the bond I was showing you, the ZN, right? The ZN has been going down, right? It has been going on down. If you look at a 15 minute chart, it has been rejecting lower high, lower low on the CPI news, all right? So CPI, PPI out of the way, the bonds are reacting, but the market might hold. If the market holds, they are posturing the market for next week, right? Maybe for a retracement next week, between Friday and next week, based on all the stuff coming up, the housing market, and the fact that the Feds are not going to touch the Feds, the, the rates, and they might stay put until next week, okay? So I hope it's helpful. Your likes, comments are appreciated. We are going to move to some stock specifics. We are going to look at the Magnificent Seven. Everybody with the probability power indicator, remember those indicators are patented, they are copyrighted, they are unique in the world. No one has those probability indicators in the world, no one. We have the design, we have the design in Europe, we have the design in a lot of countries and the US TPO office in the US, okay? Now, those help you make real decision with real money, right? Those are decisions that I make with my accounts here and we'll review some of stock specifics here. So I took the account. By the way, the accounts are up a lot more than that because I took the screenshot last Tuesday and the market and the cryptos have ripped up, broke the new high on Bitcoin. Like here, the, our crypto accounts are a lot higher because of the new highs on Bitcoin. The uh, Rich Iman account, 75 and the one 14. So the $233,000 that we started the year with, uh, $224,000 we started the year with, with $9,000, $10,000 up, right, is a lot higher than last Friday. This was the screenshot, as you can see, from last, uh, last Tuesday somewhere where you see this uh, here. See, on the fourth, yeah, you see bottom, bottom, all uh, right. So there's some stocks I want to review to help you guys, um, a lot of stocks. We are going to review some of the stocks in the portfolio, you know, which by the way, it's some of the most popular stocks. What well, look, what do I have? I have Apple, I have Amazon, I have Combez. Combez is one of my biggest winners. I mean, I bought Combez at 65, 75, CVS, Google, Intel, Meta, Palantir, PayPal, Shopify, AT&T. Those are part of the portfolio. What else is in the other portfolio? Very similar, Amazon. GBDC is one that gives us a very nice dividend. Intel, we've picked up some Intel in the high 30s, everybody. Um, Shopify, Square, AT&T, Verizon, Walgreens. So those dividend stocks are not doing much. Everybody is in the tech, but I suspect there's a point around 2026, 2028, where you want to load the bag in the dividend stocks. When this AI craze will be passed, when the tech stocks craze will be passed, you will be in a situation where dividend stocks are going to be probably the best. Because if you look right, right now at stocks like Walgreens, it's at a 30 year low, to AT&T almost at a 30 year low, Verizon almost at a 20 year low. Those stocks, guys, at one point, those stocks are going to do well in the next cycle, like the, the, the recession cycle on the next cycle in four years, 2028, all right? So let's look at the Magnificent. Uh, I feel that there's cracks in the Magnificence on the chart, but there was an article I was watching this morning where JP Morgan was saying that they felt that it was still kind of undervalued. Uh, you know, what bubble, the Magnificent Seven are actually undervalued. Morgan Stanley says, um, 
I want to look at the probability power indicator and, and show you some of the cracks that I think there is right now in the Magnificent 7. So if this is helpful, your likes, comments are super appreciated.